What's up boys, Callsign Grammy here. Welcome to my AVAB Harrier fast and easy tutorial series where I'm gonna help you get up and running in this aircraft in the fastest and easiest way possible. If you missed any of the prior videos, definitely hit the playlist below to check them all out and uh, yeah, hopefully it helps you all out. Now today, a little bit of a two for one or a two for as I call it, we're gonna dive into the teapot and help you understand how to manipulate and utilize it to its uh, maximum potential. And we're also going to learn how to deploy laser guided Mavericks on top of that so let's go ahead and jump into the harrier and get right into it all right we're in the bird here we're in active pause here for a moment just to kind of walk through the initial steps so let's go ahead and get started here we're going to turn on master arm on i also definitely recommend and prefer to turn off the map so you have a just better picture here on your nav display also while we're here we're going to go ahead and waypoint designate waypoint one and the reason we're going to do this is so that when we pull up the teapot, it's going to go ahead and start pointing that teapot in that direction where we can begin to look for targets. I'm on my training mission I created here that I used to do a lot of these tutorials. Um, now we're going to come over on this side. I'm going to go ahead and pause my uh, head tracking here. And uh, there we go. Uh, we're going to come off of the RWR uh, by hitting the middle push button here. Kind of go back to the main options here. And we're going to uh, go to teapot, which is the middle right push button here. We'll hit that. We're gonna have a black screen. Don't freak out. This is normal. The teapot is in standby mode and it's uh, clearly visible right here. STBY for standby. We need to push the push button here next to it to turn it into operational mode. First thing we're gonna do here is take it off of safe. And we're also gonna take it off of TRNL, which I believe stands for training. It also has the T right here. We're gonna push it one time to go to laser and you'll also see that T turn to an L. Now, when we have this displayed, it means the laser is on. However, it is not operational, it's not being fired. All right, so this is a very important distinction here, a distinction to pay attention to here is when you have the L, it means you're in laser mode, like it's ready to go, it's waiting for you, but you actually need to physically press the fire button. Once you do that, the laser's actually lazing and you'll see that the L is now flashing. That is what you want when you're going to deploy your laser munitions uh, for it to track to that laser point. So, you know, don't forget that. Otherwise, you're, you're, you might think you're lazing. You have the solid L. You're dropping your laser munitions and they're ending up going everywhere else. But the uh, target, it's probably because you aren't actively firing that laser. The other thing to know about the laser, too, is that uh, it will kind of extinguish if you've had, uh, had it on for too long. So if you're doing multiple runs... It's going to behoove you to, you know, maybe turn it off for a second, turn it back on, let it kind of cool off for a second. Otherwise, you might be in the heat of things and it's been on for a while and uh, you don't pay attention and you go to do another bombing run and that uh, laser isn't lazing. You're going to miss your targets. So just a couple of things to take notice of. Now, let's quickly go through some key binds, which are going to be very important for controlling the teapot here. You're going to need all your of your all of your uh, sensor select buttons bound. So starting with uh, sensor select down, which says the HUD scene reject slash TGP. And uh, it's important uh, to distinguish there that it says TGP because that's how you uh, click in to control your TGP by sensor select down. Uh, you're also going to need to have sensor select right. It says here FLIR black hot white hot. Um, this is going to let us change kind of a TV modes uh, on the teapot. Sensor select left is going to be our little zoom from narrow to wide, and I'll explain that in a second. Sensor select aft, which says DMT LC TV. This is going to allow us to change our tracking uh, modes. Uh, and then finally, you have sensor select uh, forward, which is uh, INS, IR, uh, and EOMV. Um, that also has a function, but I don't normally use it. I don't think you have to worry about it too much. The other important key binds to have here is going to be TDC action, uh, a TDC down action position. And that's going to be important for teapot designating. Uh, and then finally, to slew around, you go to your axis commands here, and you're going to have your TDC slew horizontal, TDC slew vertical. Uh, and for the most part, those are the main buttons you need to have bound to control your teapot. So let's go ahead and take us off of INS mode. When you're in INS mode right here, if you do any of the sensor select buttons here, it's not going to allow you to control the teapot. For example, if I do sensor select right, it's going to go ahead and put us into FLIR, white hot, black hot. And this is not the teapot that you're looking at here. This is, I believe, off the DMT. Uh, and so this is not the right function we want. We're going to go back to teapot. Uh, and so in order to control the teapot with the sensor select buttons, we need to first uh, double tap uh, sensor select down 
you'll see now it went from INS to T-Pod. Now at this point, we have full control of the T-Pod with our sensor select button. So now if I do sensor select right long, you'll see here, it now takes us into FLIR mode off of CCD or TV mode on the T-Pod. And if we hit it, uh, sensor select right short, we can flip flop between white hot, black hot. And if we wanna get back into CCD mode or what I would say is like a TV mode, you sensor select right long, and boom, you're right back into this view. Um, now, there's pros and cons to each one of these uh, kind of TV modes, if you will, uh, between the FLIR and the TV. Uh, when you're in the CCD mode, you get more of a, a TV picture. Uh, however, um, this isn't functional when you're in night ops. If you are, uh, if you have cloud coverage obstructing your view, you're gonna need to go into FLIR mode to peek through a lot more of that and have better kind of visibility uh, through the uh, infrared. Uh, uh, abilities on the T-Pod there. So you can flip-flop again, sensor select right long uh, to go between the two modes and short uh, for when you are in flare mode to bounce between black hot, white hot. Uh, another cool thing about the T-Pod here, if we hit sensor select left short, it bounces us between wide, uh, wide view and narrow view. And that's displayed here in the bottom left corner. You'll see the NR, which means we're in narrow and WD for wide. Now, the T-Pod itself has a 16X zoom. Uh, one other key bind I actually forgot to mention that you need to have here is your, if we go back out to our main uh, commands here, you also need to have your T-Pod video zoom in and out. And that's how you're gonna zoom in and out on the T-Pod here, okay? Uh, now that we have that in order, we're in wide view, we're at 1X, and the T-Pod itself bumps into 16X. Pretty damn impressive. You can see from quite a ways away here. Now that's in wide view. When I go to hit uh, narrow and notice that uh, it says here on the display 67 meters, right? If we bump in on narrow, we've bumped into 19 meters and look how much more we're getting out of, you know, our views here on the teapot. We clearly see that there's some tanks and ground troops here. Uh, we're looking so far in the distance that uh, the renderings haven't come in for the town where all these enemies are in you actually just see the enemies themselves um so again you can use those two modes to really scope in to see what you're looking for to or to search for what you're looking for rather and it's a lot of functionality with the um with that zoom all right the next thing we can do here and you see a convoy coming around we're slewing around with the tdc uh vertical and horizontal slew commands uh, the other thing we could do, and it's not going to work right now because we're so far away. I think we're, we're like 30, 40 miles out from these targets, but they look like they're pretty damn close, right? Uh, the other thing we need to do here, or what we can do by sensor select aft, is change our tracking modes. Right now, you see right here, we have the boxed AR, which is area. Uh, we could change it by hitting it short, aft short. It goes into point track, and this is not going to work because we're so far away. Um, and we hit it again, it goes into MT, and I, I quite honestly have forgot what the MT is. I almost rarely use it. It's mostly area track or point track for me, but sensor select aft short allows you to juggle between all three of these tracking systems, uh, depend, you know, to fit the kind of scenario that you're, you're dealing with. If you need to focus on a convoy, obviously you're gonna wanna go to point track, and when you're closer, it will lock on something. And we're gonna demonstrate that here in a second once we go through the rest of these uh, items here. Uh, one other thing you need to pay attention to is the des right here, the designation. Right now, this is in map track designation. Now, when you're using the teapot, you want to, you're going to get better inputs from the teapot because it's just a more, more precise system. And so when you go to input, for example, uh, targets of opportunity, you're going to want exact locations here. So let me give you the scenario where we see these, uh, we're, we're, let's say we're flying over and we notice there's a convoy here on the road. And let's say I want to go ahead and, you know, lock that in as a, an area uh, that I'm gonna wanna focus on to target, right? So I would, let's say, come over here to this truck, I would line it up. And if it's in map uh, des, track des, and I go to put it into the system here, it's not gonna really be accurate. I don't even think it'll align to what I'm looking at here. So what you need to do is you need to go ahead and hit the TDC action button once, and it's gonna put you into T-Pod designate. Now at this point, 
your systems, your nav systems, are all going to take the information and the um, uh, coordinates from the teapot. And so now when I go to, let's say, for example, enter this as a target of opportunity, T01, enter. This is now actually locked in that coordinate. All right. And if we come over here, T1, or T1, we have a target point now. So let's say I bump out of here. Let's say I zoom all the way out. Let's say I shift over here. Uh, we're flying around. We lose sight of everything. Uh, the cool thing is with this is that you can undesignate. You go to T1. That's the target of opportunity. You, you know, we lost sight of it. Where is it at? We hit designate again and watch what happens. We zoom back in. Look at it. We're right back on that target. So so not only can the teapot, you know, find you targets, but you can use it for entering in. Uh, you know, points of interest to lock in for later. Of course, you can use mark points is another way to do this as well. Um, but if you're at a distance or at a range, you can use a teapot to put those in way before you even on station. I mean, we're at 37 miles out and we can already range this out and start locking in points. And so I tend to use teapot and target and TOO mode as a mark point uh, system, you know, even though there's a dedicated mark point here. Um, and I just, I, I don't know, it's just kind of a system that I've gotten into. I don't think there's a right and wrong here, whatever you want to do. Uh, but essentially, we've got everything locked in, ready to go. Um, you'll notice now that we came back to the teapot after we undesignated that we are back in map des, uh, uh, slave des. You're going to have to TDC action again to get it back in the teapot des. This is going to change on you, so always pay attention when, you, you know, again, when you're in the heat in the moment, and you're flying around, there's, it's an intense moment, and you're switching systems and all that. When you come back to your teapot, just make sure you look over here to make sure that you're in teapot designate before you start inputting targets of opportunity or whatever else the uh, situation may be so that you are on point, all right? So now that we covered the teapot basics, the core elements of what you need to know how to operate it, let's get a little bit closer to the enemies here and uh, get into how to, fun how to utilize it with your laser guided Mavericks. All right, so here we are about 12 miles out from the target. I'm gonna active pause it for a second here to kind of walk through the rest of this. Now, we're gonna go ahead and go to our stores page here. We're gonna see our LMV2s with laser guided Mavericks. We're gonna select that. And uh, also this is optional here. I like the tone. So when you fire it off, you get an audible tone, let you know it's, it's, it's uh, off the rails and you shot it off. Um, and that's really what we need to do uh, at this point for that. Not much else we're going to do for the moment. So let's focus back on this, which is looking for targets. Now, uh, we're going to, as you can see here with the imaging, when you get around stuff, it contrasts is okay. Sometimes you'll have issues where the enemy vehicles kind of blend in with, it, it doesn't contrast so good against the trees or the stuff. So we'll flip into white hot, much better picture of these vehicles. So now what we're going to do here is I'm going to switch over to point track and boom we've got a lock and again if we want to come off it i'll hit uh area track we're off of that we're gonna wait for this convoy to perhaps swing around i'll try and catch the lead vehicle to stop it there we go all right now we finally have a lock and it's going to keep tracking it as long as it doesn't get masked now the rest of the procedure here is pretty self-explanatory we're going to come in uh, uh take us off active pause here Generally, inside of eight miles is that uh, range for the um, uh, for the MAV, for the most part. Uh, keep in mind here, the main difference between the laser-guided MAVs and the IR MAVs is the laser-guided, you need to stay on target to keep eyes on it with the laser. Otherwise, you will, uh, it, the, the munitions won't land on that target. So we're going to stop at eight miles out. All right, we're going to pause it again. Uh, we're still tracking the vehicle. Now we're ready to go. So what we're going to do here is we're going to hit the fire button for the laser. We see the L is flashing, which means that target is actively being lased. We're going to come over and make sure everything's boxed ready to go. Uh, next thing we're going to do is I'm going to hit the uncage button once to prepare the Maverick. And then it is, you see the X up top right there? It's looking for the uh, laser. Uh, and right now, it's not catching it, so I'm going to uncage again. And I uncaged one more time. What I did right there is the X, when you uncage it the first time, the X is going to either be high or low on the HUD. It was too high from where the, the target was. So I caged it again, 
and uncaged it. And if you saw, the X was lower, and now it actually caught. You can see there it's locked on that target, and the target is moving. Uh, now that we have that lock, we're going to fire it off. All right. And we're going to keep eyes on that target. Now, the only thing that kind of sucks about the laser guided maps is, is that, you know, it's not as fast of a strike. You have to kind of wait for this to land before you can move on to the next target. Whereas with the iron maps, you can fire them off four in a row. You're in, you're out, quick strike. That's why I really love and why I generally tend to lean towards the iron maps. So we should have an impact here any moment. All right, we are uh, we have this one in sight. You notice that after we fired, the teapot went back into safe mode. So we need to take it off of safe. We need to fire the laser. Now that we're firing the laser, we're going to hit the uncage. Oh, actually, it was already uncaged, already locked. You can see that you're locked on. Uh, the Maverick is locked in on that laser sight because the Essentially, a diamond fills with the square and the uh, was it octagon. So you, you get that symbol display in the screen, which means that seeker head is locked in on that uh, laser. So we're going to fire it off. And you'll see up top that it is already looking. The next seeker head uh, Maverick is already searching for another for another uh, lock on the laser here. So we'll take a look here. See if we get impact on this one. So that was a good shack right there. And we also got a little bit of collateral on that vehicle. All right, let's find ourselves another vehicle here. We'll have this guy right here out in the open. We're going to go ahead and take it off of safe here. The laser kind of overheated, so it puts it back into safe mode. Come off. We'll hit the fire button here. Everything looks good. And the next Mav is seeking up high. We need to bring it down low, so we're going to cage it, uncage it. And it immediately finds it down low, and we've got the solid lock. We're gonna fire. And that is our last Maverick on board here, so we should see this guy impact here momentarily. Good shack, good shack. And that is how to use the T-Pod with Laser Mavericks fast, easy, and efficiently. It doesn't have to be much more complicated than that. Uh, hopefully, you guys found this video useful and helpful. If you're just getting started with the Harrier here, it's a very fun aircraft. Definitely recommend checking it out. Uh, and, uh, yeah, thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to check out the rest of the videos in this tutorial series for the Harrier. Call sign Grammy out.